Okay. Welcome, every one of you. Um, um, I would like to start by saying that I miss you. Um, and I miss you being here. And I miss people to talk to. And I think that that basically is the status that people have when they start meeting online, that she, they miss each other. Uh, because you can't touch, you can't feel, you can't uh, smell, you can't whatever. So missing is the basis, basic status of being online. Um, and in my view, when you talk about moderating online events, it is about making people forget that they miss each other. It is about humanizing the digital event. And that is what I would like to try to do today and to talk to you about today. Um, for one, that is why I decided to make you all panelists. Um, the, the, the default uh, webinar status of Zoom is that you are all attendees and that you simply sit and listen. And I hate people that sit and listen. I love people that talk, interact, and show me what they think and feel. So please feel free that whenever you think you have to add something to this conversation, raise your hand, either physically or digitally. Uh, I will try to take notice of that and then allow you to speak. Um, then open up your microphone and talk. And let's try to make this something that we do as a group. Um, first of all, I would like you to enter something in the chat. Um, could you give me a figure between one and five on how well you are digesting this whole Corona situation? One is I'm not digesting good at all. I, I hate this. I said from one to five, Lenneke, <laughs> and there is a seven. So five means perfect, no problem. Corona time is as good as any time. And one is um, I'm very terribly bad. Yeah. Um, Natasha? We ask you why you come up with a two. Is there another Natasha? Because it wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't it? No, I, I thought you said a two. Oh no, it wasn't my name. Sorry. Yes, I said I said two because I'm as as well as you. I'm very missing the live connection uh, with everyone. Okay. And, and uh, somebody who said a four, Ruben, for instance, um, why, why is this Corona time almost as good as normal times to you? How do you manage this? It's not uh, almost as good as normal, but I think uh, we have a lot of virtual uh, options to yeah, still communicate with each other. Uh, for example, I think it was uh, more worse than, uh, it can be more worse if, if this happened like 20 years ago. Uh, so I think we're, uh, yeah, uh, it's still a very bad thing, but the technology is making it less worse, I think. That, that, okay, it's helping you. Okay. And anyone that would like to, to comment on either of these two? Oh, I, I'm four as well. Yeah. Um, and I, I just think it's quite interesting working from home. It's quite challenging. Um, so I'm, I'm quite enjoying the challenge and learning new techniques and looking more into social media and, and various things like that. So. But, but get, given the choice, Maria, yeah. um, tomorrow morning, it's either back to normal or learning more in this challenge. What would you choose? I actually quite like the challenge. Okay. <laughs> Can I see a raise of hands? Who would choose back to normal tomorrow morning? Yeah. And who would like to continue this challenge for a bit more? Yeah, quite like it. <laughs> yeah, for a bit, even. not too long. Yeah. For a bit, okay. <laughs> <agree>. How long? <laughs> How long would you say? Uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be uh, turning more to normal as long as it uh, takes. So, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I enjoy my free time. I of free time. I enjoy. I, I really enjoy my time for myself and all the new ideas that pop up. So. Let them pop up for a while. 
Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. I have um, a question. Um, because yes, we'll I don't start know in Peter, how, yes. I have a question because I don't know how it is with you guys, but um, I am the whole day in calls. Uh, so in the end of the day, I have a headache and I don't have it before when I uh, just went at the office. Can I see your raise of hands? Who is deadly tired or with a headache at the end of the day? I know I am. Well, it's okay. Pe people kind of kind of digest well. Okay. Um, could you, in one word, probably uh, maybe uh, enter in the chat what you find the hardest about this period? What's the hardest part about this corona period? It's interesting. I, I will give you uh, uh, 20 or 30 seconds just to scroll through and, and read some. Okay. Um, I won't go into this. Uh, if this were a conference about coping with Corona, I would pick this up and start talking to you about it. Um, the reason I made you do this was to show you a few things. First of all, um, I feel it's important then when, when people come together that you make them form a temporary tribe. Um, people should feel part of a group and you become part of a group by talking to each other, listening to each other, sharing problems or solutions or whatever. And when we go into a, a, uh, a physical venue, this is something that also almost automatically happens. When you go online, uh, we tend to not look at each other as being human anymore. There is this distance. Um, and as a moderator uh, and as a meeting designer, you can help take this hurdle by doing stuff like this, by having people respond to each other, to questions, etc. cetera. Um, another thing I did on purpose was give you some time to read. What you see a lot um, in physical conferences and online is that we don't allow people enough time to prepare for stuff or to digest stuff. Um, and especially when you're online, I mean, there's the screen with all the faces, there's the chat, there are sometimes a poll, there is all kinds of stuff going on. And by allowing people time to simply root, read through the chat for a bit and be silent as a moderator for a minute, you allow people to keep track of what's happening and I feel that when you design and moderate an online meeting, you need to be very aware of the buildup of your program and what you tell people to do at what point in time. Um, there is online meetings where I tell people not to use the chat for a bit in order to concentrate on something else and then tell them specifically, now you can go to the chat and please do this or that. It has to do with stepping into the shoes of your participants and understanding what is happening in their minds. So when you do an online conference, you can't simply copy the physical conference to online. You need to completely redesign it for this specific medium. Um, I will now um, take you to a video. And that is also part of what I feel is a good online meeting, that you change the channel every now and then, and that you change the way that you offer information every now and then. I will take you to a video, but, but be before we do, I would like you to take in mind one specific event. And please make it an event that is rich on content because as a conference moderator, I don't do 
uh, rock concerts or theater or stuff like that. It's always content meetings. Could you try to think of one that you either organized in the physical world or would be organizing in the upcoming time or that you would be visiting and write that one down. That will be your, exam your example that you will use to understand the video later on. Please write down one physical event. Might be a conference, might be a team meeting, stuff like that. And if you have written it down, please give me a little gesture so I can keep track of how everybody is doing. Yeah, okay. I'm going to start the video. Um, try to keep this one, this one event in the back of your mind while watching the video. Here we go. No, I need to, sorry, forgot one step. I need to put on the sound, I guess. And I don't know. If you don't hear anything, start waving at me. Nee, we horen niks. Going to stop this because a lot of people waving at me. Um, let me see. Sibren, there's a techni technical guy somewhere there out there that can help me. Sibren, help me out here. Where do I get sound? Mm. Ah. I think I found it. Okay, I think I found it. Try again. Going back to the start. When your event is digital, make sure that you avoid the most important pitfalls. Invest in making it interactive and engaging. Here are my top tips for making your virtual event about people. Tip one, design for digital. Don't start diving into platforms and tools. Start with defining the objectives like you would for any normal events. Then start coming up with the most effective formats. To make the human experience equally engaging, break down your design back to scratch and start rebuilding it, especially for online. Just as in any live event, you do the coding of your event in the first few minutes. That means that if you want the session to be interactive, you need to skip the endless introductions. Start making a real connection right away. In general, with uh, online meetings, we tend to allow people to keep on posting all the time, all the time. I prefer to work with designated time slots, allowing people to listen first and then respond or come up with questions or to think and give input first and then concentrate on the speaker or the information. Online uh, minds drift even faster than in real life. So it's key to engage the participants roughly every three to five minutes. Actively involving people means that you make them think, that you make them move, that you make them act. If you're presenting, cut the crap. That might mean that you only give them the summary, the main points, and that you send the rest by email or as a PDF attachment in the chat. But don't keep on rambling on and rambling on because you'll lose them. In virtual meetings, people are all in their home or at their desk looking and participating individually. And yes, that may be challenging, but fear not and be creative. Try stuff. There are platforms that allow you breaking up in smaller groups. You can have these groups dig deeper into content, prepare questions for the speaker, come up with potential solutions. Not everyone is interested in the same content. So one option is you allow people to log in only for the parts 
that they're interested in, or have a number of sessions simultaneously for people to choose from. Every human being needs time to himself in order to think, to prepare, to digest, to contemplate. You can ask participants to write down a list of most important challenges. You can ask them to take a walk around the living room or the garden to think something over and it will make them more careful listeners. People love to play around. So why don't you play a quiz or a game? Why don't you have them do crazy assignments? Look for fun stuff online. There's lots of it out there. The basic thing is make them have fun. And we're back. Did everybody hear and see the video? <laughs> yeah? Yes. I see, mm -hmm. I see nodding, nodding. Good. Thank God, because um, I'm not very good with tech and, and tools, etc. And uh, one of my tips normally is uh, make sure that you have somebody sitting with you to take care of this. Somebody who really knows what he's doing. Um, but for this, uh, for this setup, I was only allowed for myself to be here. So that's why uh, this goes like it goes. Um, what I will do is... Um, I will give you a minute to think of questions that you have as a result of this video. Um, I will open up the Q&A section. And within that Q&A section, you can enter uh, questions, which you can also um, like other people's questions. Um, I have to do this. Yep, here we go. The good thing with this liking functionality is that I can see what the most popular questions are and I will answer them first. So please enter your questions in the Q&A. And if you don't have any questions, please read other people's questions and like them if you think that's a good question. So I can see what the most popular questions are. I see some faces trying to find the Q&A section. Is in de balk uh, links, is in de balk eronder, aan de onderkant van je scherm. Ja, yeah. on the bottom side of your screen, there is, it says chat and it says Q&A. At least it does with me. Lenneke says, I can't type anything. Should I open this? Uh, strange that... Nobody can answer uh, enter a question. That's strange and I have no clue why, why that is because there's no function that I should activate Q&A. Okay, well, let's decide that the Q&A function is not working and simply uh, go to the chat function. If you have any questions, either enter it in the chat or simply raise your hand, open your mic and come up with your question. Any questions? Are there no questions at all? Sandra has a rose in her hands. Please open your mic, Sandra. Hi. Hi. Hi, um, I would like to have your opinion on something. Um, what, what I see now often that uh, mainly trainers transform their day training or, or day events mm -hmm. to, of course, uh, an online session. 
but for instance, three or sometimes even four smaller sessions during one day. So for instance, from nine to 11, one hour break, uh, 12 uh, to two, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I think this is really still very consuming. I haven't had any experience yet, neither as a host or, or a participant. But what is your opinion or maybe on the others on, on, on this? And, and what kind of opinion are you looking for? Well, is, your, is your proposal to, to split it up over multiple days or to change is it, the format? Is it, really, is it really doable? Yes, I would, I would like to prefer to split it on more days. For instance, a uh, two-hour session, either two times a week most, mm. or, or I don't know, but not three or four sessions on one day. But, so actually, it's your opinion or experience uh, on, on this. Yeah, uh, and any thoughts by the others? Should you split a one-day training or a one-day conference and then split it and make it a multiple day with shorter sessions? Or can you do it in one day? Anyone who, who would like to add? Yes, Natasha? Yeah, I shouldn't do it in one day. We are also um, thinking about a, an online event and how we're going to do it. and. Um, some in our team want to uh, organize a big online event, but I don't. I don't think it works in this time. Uh, more like this with with different sessions uh, mm -hmm. when you can uh, tune in when you want. Maybe uh, not give a session one time, but uh, multiple times, so that if someone can join, they can join another day or yeah. another time. Um, and if you do it one day, uh, yeah, what you said before, uh, give them assignments or uh, uh, allow to take yeah. a break and then they come back and log in again because... Yeah, there, there is, a, I, I, agree, yeah, I agree with you on this one, uh, Natasha. And um, uh, two colleagues of mine did a three-day conference, so three full days. Um, and they managed to keep people engaged and energetic for three full days. But that means that the longer you want people to be on screen, the more specific you have to design for them to keep energy and concentration, etc. cetera. Um, and that means that you have to start breaking it down and looking through your schedule and, and finding the moments where you think that people will lose interest or where people will lose energy and do something with that. And you can do it in one day, but then you have to constantly change formats you'll have to allow them to go off screen for half an hour to work on an assignment maybe work with others in teams of three with a telephone call instead of online for a bit so make people constantly change formats and therefore keep the energy um, and as you said before allow people to cherry pick don't expect people to be online for the full day um, allow them to only take the parts that they are interested in. Yes, and Gerrit uh, says here, if we cannot engage attendees for two days online, why did we think we could uh, uh, in a physical event? Um, the funny thing is, I agree with you, Gerrit. I think that the, the change to online finally got us the conversations that we need. Uh, I have a lot of customers telling me, we're going online, so now we have to think about our schedule. And I think, but isn't this true in a physical environment? So, yes, uh, absolutely, I agree, uh, Gerrit. Um, Renske says, how about, for example, show elements? Uh, yes, absolutely, that works. I think that any kind of, uh, of entertainment will help you do a better meeting, especially when it's a bit longer. Um, and I would even encourage you to find ways where participants could play a part in this, uh, uh, in this either music or play or games or whatever. Um, a quiz online is brilliant to keep people energized. So music is brilliant to keep people energized. You could even think about a structure where smaller groups go to specific parts of entertainment 
uh, uh, with only 10 people at a time to make it more intimate. Because if you send out uh, an artist to 500 people, that's great. But if you have that artist do his performance a few times for 25 people at a time, then it's even better because then we can all see each other in this screen. We can maybe even sing along or we can help write lyrics or whatever. Um, there, there, there's this guy that they, they, they're called Song Division uh, and they do stuff like this online where people actually write lines for a song that they will perform. Um, and then the, the energy of the entertainment comes together with the link with the content. And that, that is really brilliant stuff to do. Um, somebody says, I'm a bit tired to look at myself all day. So different formats would be a relief. Could you please open your microphone and explain this one? HMC. Is HMC here as a... Yes, you are. Let me help. This will help. Yes. Um, yes. Well, I'm, I'm on back to back meetings all day. So um, I make myself as small as I can. But unfortunately, I keep seeing myself and I'm so tight because I've got the idea that I'm talking to myself all day. I can hear the different voices, yeah. but uh, that doesn't help. And it's distracting. But at this point in time, you see other faces, right? Yeah, yeah. So I keep looking and yeah. it's nice. You know, you see people yeah. moving. So I think this, <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's a very good idea. Yeah. And yeah. it makes it makes it more interactive as well. <laughs> And, and, and it, and it is, is even better when, uh, um, if you bring up something, I yeah. ask somebody else to respond to that because then there's real human interaction. Yeah. Um, it's even better, better if we at some points in meetings work with uh, breakout groups. Yeah. So that you, for instance, put people in groups of three or five together in order to talk because the smaller the group, the more, uh, more physical it feels. Because when we go in, into groups, groups of three now, uh, the pictures we have of each, of each other become bigger. Yeah. So it exactly. feels more human. Yeah. So when you start designing online events, please try to take this as a, as a learning that everybody is looking for the feeling of human interaction. And the more you can bring that in, um, the better people will be engaged. Uh, I had an example this morning. Uh, I was talking to a group of Dutch mayors um, and they told me that elder men usually take a very long time to, to talk. Uh, and we, we talked about one option uh, because usually an elder man will put out his statements and then give three or four examples with that statement in order to prove it. Alternatively, that elder man could put out a statement and then ask to all the people in the meeting, are there any people who have an example on this one? And then the same examples probably would come, but not from the elder man talking, yada, 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 but from people uh, interacting with that elder man. And that would make it more energetic for the elder man himself, because it is horrible to talk into this camera all the time without hearing any feedback from people. Um, I mean, the mere fact that you all silenced your microphones to me is horrible because I can't hear anything. So um, if I work in smaller groups, I had a group of five yesterday, I specifically ask everybody to keep open their microphones in order to hear the little laughs or the little noises or whatever. It makes it easier. But you help, you, you'll be hearing the whole family then. Yeah, but is that a problem? Okay. Not for me, I've got Bird no. and I've got a daughter and I've got Casa de Papel. So I don't know if you'd mind, but I'll, no, I'll the, unmute. <laughs> the, 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 the funny thing is everybody is in this same situation. So yeah. everybody kind of, accepts that fact. I mean, if your neighbor starts drilling holes in the wall, I would ask you to, uh, to switch off your microphone. Um, and if your children start fighting and really screaming, that probably would be a good moment to temporarily switch off your microphone 
and if you're going to hit them, maybe even switch off your camera. Um, but um, for the rest, it is good to hear each other's little noises. Can I put forward a question? Yes, please, Sandrina. Um, it's more or less about the same thing. My event or my, my well, my event would be a tour. Um, I'm, a, I'm a tour guide um, and I do tours also with companies in which I present uh, stuff and then we discuss it. We discuss it in terms of uh, modern uh, situations like disruption or innovation or whatever. But I'm talking about the history of Rome. So we're walking in this environment and people feel the environment, they see it, they, they hear the noises of Rome, they, they smell the coffee, they, they feel the sun, etc, etc. That's um, all gone. <laughs> that's all gone. And I, I, I think I don't want to fall into the trap that a lot of people do, that they make videos of their performance on the streets. Because that's not interactive. And I want to be there as a guide and I want to have this interaction with the people I guide around. But how do I simulate this this life environment uh, um, experience? I, I think the answer is in having people tell stories and having people think back to situations where they once were. Um, you're in Rome, right? Mm -hmm. um, has ever has ever, anyone ever been in Rome here? Can nope. see a raise of hands. Yes. Marlene, could you open your microphone? Yes. Could you tell me um, uh, one specific spot? What, what was your favorite spot in Rome? I don't know the exact name anymore because I was, we were just walking around, my friend and yeah. me, a uh, friend and I, and uh, we, we walked down into a park, had a coffee to go, and uh, had ourselves uh, some food. But the park was on a on some sort of mountain and we had a view over the city. The sun came out, we were like, this is the best place ever. And we, we just, yeah, we just found it out uh, by ourselves. We saw like the, 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 the what's behind you. We, we saw the, 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 the old ancient buildings and uh, yeah. yeah. Does this already partly answer your question, Sandrine? Yes, yes, you can immediately hear what is happening. And the funny thing is, if I would, um, can, can I have somebody who was never, never has been to Rome? Who has never been to Rome? I've never been. Me. Uh, Renske. Did you raise your hand? No? Okay. Uh, 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 Lenneke. Lenneke never was in Rome. Could oh. you open your microphone? Yes. Um, what is your favorite city? Um... Uh, I think Cape Town is my favorite city. Cape Town? Yeah. What is it about Cape Town that makes it your favorite city? Uh, well, it's been 10 years since I've been there, but it was my favorite city because I really like the energy and the okay. fact that it's um, upcoming. Well, at least it was 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> and I really like uh, the motivational energy that people were having in the city at that moment. Okay. Uh, I will take the word energy. Sandrina, you know Rome. Where in Rome is is this energy? If she ever goes, to where she can, where can she find that energy in Rome? Well, the energy actually, the energy you will find inside yourself because everything you see, you connect with something that is important to you. So if you interested in uh, in the history and uh, the the role of leaders, then you will find this energy walking in the Forum Romanum. If you like uh, to be inspired by beauty and art because you think that makes life wonderful and beautiful and worth living, then you go to uh, Piazza Navona and then you see the, the Baroque art or, well, I can go on like this. Okay. And what, what, what I try to do here is um, um, I used uh, Marijn to uh, create an, an image and an atmosphere of Rome. And even though we were not there uh, Probably Enough. most of us could feel a bit of that. And I used Lenneke to make you, make you connect to someone who has never been to Rome and tell her something about Rome, connecting to her level of what she likes in the city. Yes, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So th this, this is, and, and I feel strongly about, I mean, this is the basis of any good moderation, online or offline. Um, so 
I do exactly the same these days as what I did offline for many, many years. The only thing I need to do is figure out how to translate this into the online environment. And that may be a struggle. Um, but that is a question of starting with thinking about what do I want? Then trying to figure out, okay, if I do this online, where will people lose interest, lose energy, etc.? And then simply going out there and start looking for the platforms and the tools, etc., that can help you do this. And please find specialists for that. I mean, I can help you with the meeting design, but I cannot help you well, maybe for a part, but I'm no specialist in helping you finding the right tools and techniques and platforms, etc. I mean, uh, Gerrit Heikoop is here. Uh, talk to him. I mean, uh, his, his team of live online events know where to find and how to use uh, um, uh, tech and, and platforms, etc. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Very, uh, very inspiring answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Marlene had a question saying how to mode speakers to integrate interactive elements in their talk. Um, here again um, goes the saying that this was also the case in the physical environment. There we have been struggling with this for, for many centuries, I want to say, because I mean science has proven a long time ago that sitting down and listening to somebody talk for an hour is the worst way of learning something. Um, I would say this is the golden opportunity because if you now get a speaker, you can explain to that speaker that because he is online, um, he will lose his audience after two minutes. After two or maybe three or four minutes, people will be gone because it's very tiring to listen to somebody talk on the screen constantly. Uh, and there is all kinds of other stuff going on, email, etc. Um, so use this almost to threaten the, the speakers into being more interactive. And, and I kind of hope that when we return back to physical events, that people will take those learnings and, and also use them in the physical environments. So this might be a gift from heaven for our industry in the end. I know for now it's horror and we all lose money and income, etc. But mm. I, I think it might change a lot for the good. Let me see if there's any more questions that I can take. Yes, Anita says uh, online attention span is different. And that's, that's very true. Let me see, where is Anita? She's no longer here. Uh, took too long answering her question. Okay, she's she's gone. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it is true. Attention spans are shorter. So what I try to do is, is change formats more often. Um, get people to talk to me more often. Um, do more interaction with polls and word clouds. Um, don't present that much, but give reading breaks. If you have something that is very factual, don't read it out, blah, 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 blah. Tell people in two words what you want to tell them and then allow them five minutes to read the facts and figures and then come back to them and see if there's any questions because that will make people change from one medium to another. John Yap. Yes. Uh, I didn't write down a question. I don't know if you want to go through the chat first, but I've got another question. Yeah, please do. Could, could you give some sort of presentation for all the teachers? Because what I see now <laughs> is, you know, what happened. I'm, I'm uh, marketing communication for an ICT company and we do ICT for um, 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 onderwijs, education. Yeah, education. And uh, we had to, you know, team up to make sure that all the teachers were able to teach uh, in teams, Zoom, whatever there was was available. You see a lot of teacher struggle and, you know, you've got the old fashioned way of teaching. That's uh, front teaching. They stand in a the classroom and they 
I expect children to listen for 50, 90 minutes. And they do exactly the same thing online. And where it's more a discussion of, it's not sending your information, it's the interaction, what we heard here as well, but it's also, um, you know, what you, what you would normally, you can show something, somebody to do something, but it's more that you train them. Um, you know, the, the big question there is how can you train people online? Well, you, you, can, you, you can train them by simply having them do stuff. Yeah. Uh, we, we tend to, in general, we tend to tell them everything they need to know first. Yeah, that's it. And then yeah. say, now try. Um, I think that online you need to do it, a lot of times you need to do it the other way around. Simply tell people, I will give you 10 minutes to work on this problem. Try. And I, in 10 minutes, come back to me with questions. And then you have questions and okay, you have another five minutes to solve the problem. If you yeah. can't, in another five minutes, come back to me and ask again. Um, by the way, I'm looking at this, the time schedule. Um, if I understood this system correctly, they will throw us out in approximately a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shame. Um, I'm not quite sure, but at some point we will, uh, we will, will be thrown out. Uh, I just entered my email address in the chat. If you have any more questions, please reach out and I will be glad to help you. I will enter another thing, if time still allows me, in the chat. It is the written version of the video that I just showed you. So as you can read through it in your own time and space. And again, if there's any questions, um, I'm very happy to, to help you out. If you have questions, come up with suggestions do a little brainstorm or whatever. Um, we're all trying to find the truth in this new environment. Uh, if I can do anything to help you uh, uh, get used to it and, and work with it, um, I'm here. So let's try another question just until we're thrown out. <laughs> what about gamification? Yes, please do, Lenneke. Gamificate away. Um, people people like games, and especially when you manage to put the content into a game, it's brilliant. I mean, there, there's there's a tool out there where you can do pub quizzes with very large groups. A few thousand people can do pub quizzes. If you can cut the presentation into little pieces, do a pub quiz and have every outcome of a question answered by the experts, explaining why B was the right answer. People will be more engaged, people will have fun, and people will listen to the answers of that expert better because they want to know A, why they were right, or B, why they were wrong, and then complain. Um, so yes, please do gamification. There's, there's all kinds of little stuff out there. There's home, home bingo. There is, uh, as I said, pop quizzes. There's the wheel of names uh, where you can simply put in stuff in a wheel and then roll the wheel and whatever comes out, that is what you will be talking about. Um, use that stuff. It's, it really helps. Uh, let me see. Somebody says, oh, great, which is also good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, start the day with a yoga session or anything uh, in longer sessions. I mean, this is all, only 45 minutes, but, but if I knew, I would know that we already had a full day and another few hours to go, then 45 minutes is too long. Then I will put in something where I ask you all to stand up, take a walk in the garden, think about a question, come back. I will do that more often. Um, and Everybody doing online events, almost everybody tells me, once you have people in this environment, do not allow them to go away because then you will lose them. And I, I disagree with that because you will lose them when you keep them in here when the energy is gone, because then they will physically still be here, but they won't be here mentally. Um, Yes, of course, you take a risk. If I now all tell you that you have a 10-minute break 
and in that 10 minutes you do have to do an assignment, there is a risk that some of you might not come back after 10 minutes. The only thing that tells me that is that my stuff was not interesting enough. So it is the best midterm evaluation that you can have. Make sure that you're so damn interesting that everybody can't wait until the 10 minutes are over to restart. So force yourself to, to bring stuff that people want. And if half of them walk away, okay, then it was not for them. Be happy with the other half and work with them and make them happy. Okay. Um, because the, the thing with live events is we um, put them in a room, then we lock the doors and then they're there for the rest of the day. They can't escape. Here they can. But to me, that's an advantage because you can immediately, immediately tell whether you're engaging or not. Hmm, let me see. If you have any more questions, just talk to me, right? I see a question from Romy, which I find quite interesting as well. How can you facilitate spontaneous networking like you normally would do yeah. with network drinks or by running into people? Yeah, well, there, there, there is, um, um, there's a few tools. Um, um, but the basis is first you need to find out why you want the networking. What is the objective of the networking? Because in my view, networking is never just to meet someone and then see what happens. As soon as you know what the objective of your networking is, then start looking out for tools that you can use. Uh, there is a platform, it's called Hopin. There they do speed dating. So you simply click on a button, you're connected to one random other participant and you talk. That's great sometimes. Uh, there's another tool, it's called 24 Hours. It is uh, WhatsApp based. You can simply hook people up in smaller WhatsApp groups. So if, if we were here with 100 people and we would have that tool, at some point I would tell you, okay, please turn to your phone, go to the uh, 24 Hours application. You will be assigned to a group of three people for uh, a 20 minute WhatsApp group chat with those people. And this is a subject, subject that you should be talking about. Then it's guided networking. So um, again, first figure out what your objective is, then start looking for tools that can do that for you. And there's, uh, I'll be right with you, Aromi. Uh, and there is also an option of like, send everybody the same beer um, or the same, uh, 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 non-alcoholic drink or whatever uh, so that you can all have a toast at the end. Ask everyone to bring something with the coffee and then do a quick round. Well, what did you have? When you go lunching, make everybody show their lunch box and tell what's inside in order to create, again, a link. Yes, Romy, please. Um, we already like try to do like some of kind of like guided uh, uh, networking by providing matchmaking sessions. I think that's close to what you network tables offers with the uh, one on one yeah. sessions, for instance. Absolutely. So I think we're trying to like do that kind of networking. Um, I was more looking into like we uh, organized several music events and conferences to more of like the spontaneous networking that happens where you would run into someone and you would talk and you'd be like, oh, wait, I know you who you should talk to. Let me introduce you to. Um, and I have been like thinking about how we can possibly faci uh, facilitate, Jesus, facilitate that. Uh, but I was just wondering uh, if you have any experience with that or how, how you would um, go about that. Well, I mean, at, at, at some point, uh, you, you use people's information just to put them in random rooms of three and have them talk there, that would be like lunch. You could tell people, okay, we will have lunch, but during lunch, we will still be online. Um, uh, you will be in groups of four, that's your table where you sit. And talk about any subject. Um, you could do a random mix up of names and tell people to give each other a call. Um, if I would take these names and I would have your phone numbers, I could send you an email saying uh, Romy will 
uh, call with Marie Louise. Maria will call with Vivian. Uh, we will take a break. Um, I will see you in half an hour. Give each other a call. And then you will simply be calling randomly. Um, you could do a pin board where everybody could pin a specific business problem that they have. And then everybody could look at that. Um, the Q&A function was not working right now. But when it does, there is the option that people can comment on each other's questions. So I could all ask you to enter your main challenge in business at this, po this point in time, and then ask everyone, take a look through the list. If there's anybody there where you think I could help that person, enter your email address as an answer. Um, and then people are linked based on questions and answers that they have. So again, um, if, if you at some point, uh, Romy, if you have something where you know what you want, again, drop me an email and I will try to come up with some, some ideas. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. And the, the, the basic thing here is that uh, being online does not mean that everything has to be high tech online. Sometimes a simple call or holding a paper in front with uh, a word on it or whatever is more engaging and more interactive and more effective than doing everything online. Um, okay, any more questions? No, we need to stop. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to end this session, otherwise uh, the people at network tables will kill me. Um, thank you all for being here. And uh, if there's any more questions, uh, drop me a note and we will talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will be, I will be missing you. Thank you.